it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, October 26th. Okay, so we have the moon still in this Leo energy, but only until 4.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, at which time the moon is going to go void, of course. And when things are kind of in this void, we're not able to kind of see clearly. We're not able to kind of feel the emotions accurately. Everything kind of gets shook up a little bit and we start questioning a lot of the things that we felt pretty sure about when that moon was in a direct energy. And we will be shifting into Virgo energy at 11.48 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the transition from Leo energy to Virgo energy is always felt because, well, we had this last quarter moon take place in the Leo energy, which, of course, was a little bit of a trigger and an activation in order to illuminate where we're going through growing pains, where it is that there's been a pivot in our heart space and where it is that we kind of have to boss up. We have to be bold, brave, and courageous enough to do the hard things. And of course, we're in Scorpio season, so the hard things are letting go, letting things die, letting things end. And of course, we're not quite there as of yet. We will be under that new moon in Scorpio, but the energy is trying to empower us to be heart-led, to stay in alignment with our heart space, so that, of course, what it is that we want to do, what we want to pursue, is kind of the motivating force for us to kind of clean up the debris and wrap up the loose ends of the past. The Virgo energy is an earth energy. And it's an earth energy ruled over by Mercury, ruler of the mental plane. And of course, Mercury right now is in Scorpio energy with the detective hat on. We are looking back. We're kind of replaying certain situations, conversations, and, you know, let's call them memories that we're reframing. We're operating from a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness, therefore seeing things from a different lens. And we're looking to put the pieces together. We're looking to connect the dots. We're looking to ask the right questions from the people, places, and things, even ourselves, in order to come to a better understanding of how it is that we've gotten here. But that Virgo energy, because it's an earth energy, things slow down. We become a little bit more present, a little bit more in the present moment, in the here and now aware of our physical body, aware of our physical circumstances. And because Virgo energy ruled over by Mercury is all up in the mental plane, we are focusing in on the finer details that make up the greater, grander whole. And we absolutely love Scorpio and Virgo energy working together because they're both detectives. They're both analytical. They're both having the same type of, let's call it tunnel vision, on the problematic areas in order to come up with solutions. Scorpio energy wants to kind of wrap things up, put things behind us, bring things to a closure, finality and end. And the Virgo energy just wants to improve, wants to make better choices, better decisions, better adjustments in order for our physical realm to look good, to feel good, to be more in alignment with what makes sense with our overall wants, needs and desires that of course we're just bringing online. So with all of that being said, there are 10 different aspects popping off here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon in this Leo energy still is going to get into the boxing ring, square off, create tension and conflict with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. Now, a square is going to illuminate the growing pains that we're currently going through. And because the moon in this Leo energy is heart aligned, is heart led, is kind of, you know, building in the empowerment needed in order to make the changes and the transformations needed. We have Uranus, on the other hand, retrograde in the Taurus energy, trying to show us where it is that we're holding on to dead weight. We're beating a dead horse, so to speak, where there are physical people, places and things that the old version of self was resonating with that we've created that, of course, the new version of self no longer in alignment with. But why are we still holding on? Why are we still again in this particular position where we're holding on to things that we've outgrown? And so again, the tension point here is illuminating where it is that we're holding a little bit of fear, a little bit of insecurity, if you will, to let that particular aspect of our physical realms go. And of course, emotionally speaking, this Leo energy pushing us to do the hard things, pushing us to truly express ourselves, whether it is a good expression or a bad expression on why it is that we're continuing to hold on to things that again, no longer serving us, no longer resonating with, 
no longer teaching us valuable lessons. It is at this particular juncture that the moon is going to go void, of course, but we have a whole bunch of different interactions taking place while the moon is kind of shaky, unstable, and uncertain. The first one being the moon making a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in this cancer energy, again, a water sign, kind of putting us in a situation to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built, what it is that we've already created, what it is that we've already brought to life, what it is that we found to provide us with the safety, the security that we need in our emotional realm. Of course, Mars, he is willing to kind of do what he needs to do to protect himself, to protect his values, to fight for what is actually worthy of fighting for. And so this particular interaction is going to work to our benefit because it kind of helps us to emotionally refine what is worth fighting for, what is worth defending, what is worth protecting. Again, the cancer energy very attached to the past, trying to hold on to what is tried, tested, true, comfortable and familiar. But there are particular points, especially of our family dynamics, of our foundation that we call home, that we kind of rely upon as far as what has worked for us in the past. Well, those particular aspects, there has been a change. We've had a change of heart. Thus, the moon in Leo showing us where it is that we don't feel as strongly about certain people, places, and things. We don't feel as strongly about fighting, defending, protecting certain people, places, and things. And therefore, we are, again, emotionally refining our target, our motivation, our determination. We're really taking stock because, again, we just had the last quarter moon in Leo. It is a reflection back. It is taking stock, taking inventory of what is working, what isn't, what needs to die, what needs to be kind of brought to life, what it is that we have to put behind us and what it is that we now want to start kind of aiming towards. So this is going to help put us in a situation, a circumstance to understand where it is that we have to boss up where it is that certain aspects that we want to keep around that are working for us that do make us feel safe and secure, those particular aspects, we are willing to protect, we're willing to kind of do what needs to be done to make sure that nobody disrupts this inner peace, this inner stability, albeit very little at this particular juncture that we've been able to create within ourselves. So then the moon is going to make a harsh interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde in his rulership and Pisces energy. This has everything to do with our spirituality, our intuition, our dreams, our imagination, our creativity. Now, this is a negative interaction. This is a harsh interaction. So this is going to illuminate where it is that now we're getting overwhelmed. We're kind of confused on what it is that we need to be doing. We're losing sight of the vision, the goal, the dream. We are not as I'm going to say, aligned with our higher self as we need to be. And therefore, we are starting to kind of spiral. We're starting to feel the pressure, the weight, the heaviness, if you will, of this to-do list that we are essentially forming in order for us to get away from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. Now, the interesting dynamic here, this takes place at 7.02 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, 9.12 a.m., the sun in Scorpio energy is going to make a positive interaction with Neptune. So this is water on water action. So water is going to come in and cleanse us from the heaviness, from the weight, from the confusion, from the anxiety. It is going to purify the energy, the vibration, so that we can get realigned with our higher self, tap into our intuition once again. It is going to refresh us, renew us in our soul and our spirit, and give us a little bit more hope and faith. So we're willing to put hope and faith in ourselves and a plan and someone else. It is kind of our ability to understand the spiritual life lesson that is taking place in our physical realms as of right yet. And we're tapping into, I'm going to call it new downloads and new creative solutions. Our imagination is popping off. It is reminding us of the end goal, vision and dream. It is kind of, you know, giving us that particular inspiration that we may have lost as of late, especially through eclipse season, uh, is kind of bringing that back. And it's kind of building us up because, of course, the Scorpio energy is empowerment at its finest form. And so we're actually feeling really good 
about the possibilities, about some of the things that we could try, about some of the things that we want to put behind us, about some of the things that we want to pursue. The moon in the Leo energy, though, going to make a very uncomfortable interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, who, of course, is at the 29 critical crisis degree of Capricorn energy, which tells us that the moon is at the 29 critical crisis karmic degree of Leo energy. And of course, because this is a harsh interaction, it's not going to feel good. There's going to be an intensity, a darkness, a heaviness, a weight. Suddenly we lose ourselves out of that refreshing renewal energy that the sun and Neptune just gave us. Suddenly we're starting to speak fear into some of the things that we were really feeling good about. Suddenly we are starting to think of all the things that could go wrong instead of all the things that could go right. Instead of feeling empowered, like in refresh, like we were just starting to do, now we're kind of falling apart, if you will. We're losing ourselves to the egoic programming. We're losing ourselves to the fear, the doubts, the insecurities. Now, does it feel good? No. Does it need to happen? Absolutely, yes. Why? Because this is the point in time that the moon is then going to shift into Virgo energy, 11.48 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so the reason why that's a beneficial thing is because, again, the Virgo energy needs to focus on the problems in order to fix them. We're going to have a really good idea of what the problems actually are coming out of that intensity, coming out of that illumination of the darkest parts of our fears, doubts, insecurities, and egoic programming. So we're going to have a lot to work with right out of the gate. We move into this Virgo energy, 1148 AM, 1239 PM. We do have the moon in this Virgo energy, making a very positive interaction with that North Node in Aries energy. The North Node trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us in alignment with our mission, with our purpose, with our potential. Now, here's the thing. The moon in Virgo energy is allowing us to, again, think about the future. Think about where it is that we would like to end up. Think about where it is that we would like to go. Think about what we want to do, what we want to pursue, and in that realization, figure out all of the blockages, all of the challenges, all of the hurdles that we may face in pursuit of this new path. Why are we thinking this way, you may ask? Well, because the Virgo energy focuses in on all of the different variables, the smaller little tiny details. We are preparing, mentally speaking, for all of the challenges, all of the hurdles, all of the blockages, and we're kind of in our mind's eye, because again, Mercury's the ruler of this Virgo energy, we're kind of playing through all the different situations and circumstances that could happen. Again, we don't want to be surprised. We want to, again, kind of run through um, all the different options that we have available to us to kind of get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. So we sit in that particular energy for the majority of the afternoon, 526 p.m. The moon in this Virgo energy going to make a beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who, of course, is retrograde in Gemini energy. What does Virgo and Gemini have in common? That is right. Mercury rules over both of them. Mercury rules over an earth sign such as Virgo, mutable energy, and Mercury rules over Gemini energy, mutable air sign. So there is a commonality here. Now, the interesting part is, of course, Jupiter magnifies. So we're thinking about the big picture of what it is that we've already learned, what it is that we've already experienced, because, of course, he's retrograde. So the whole point of this is kind of looking back to particular situations, life circumstances, tough of life lessons in order for us to pluck out those silver linings, those little tidbits of information and knowledge that, again, we could be integrating in the present moment in the here and now so that we can prevent ourselves from repeating past patterns, past behaviors, making the same mistakes again. So Jupiter is giving us this big picture, this big magnifying glass to look back at certain situations, conversations, circumstances that have already popped off, already transpired in order for us to pluck out that wisdom knowledge. The moon in Virgo energy focused in on the smaller puzzle pieces of this greater, grander picture. So now we're piecing together why we have the perspective that we do. 
why we think we are in alignment with a particular path, why we act the way that we do, because again, the Virgo energy, very focused on habits as well, especially habits that we find ourselves in on autopilot. And again, because the Virgo energy is very connected to what we think in our mind is what we manifest in our physical form, we have to take the good look back and figure out what the hell we were thinking way back when in order to manifest this particular situation, this present circumstance. The moon in Virgo energy, then going to sextile, which is a beautiful interaction with the sun in Scorpio energy. So like I previously mentioned, we love Virgo energy and Scorpio energy working together. First of all, you know, we love earth and water working together because when you water earth, something new grows. And because the, the uh, Virgo energy is ruled over by Mercury and Mercury is currently in the Scorpio energy, there is a nether, let's call it checkbox being checked off in our favor for us to see the finer details of our inner dialogue, what it is that we've manifested, where it is that the inner dialogue, the inner narrative may be too judgmental, too highly critical of, you know, certain people, places and things could be of ourselves and where it is that the sun shining a bright light in the Scorpio energy needs that to change. Again, Scorpio energy is about the deep change, the deep transformation going on in our soul self. And so, you know, the moon being our emotional realm, the sun being the life force energy, we are essentially working together to get down to the nitty gritty to understand why it is that we act the way we do, why we think the way we do, why we make the choices that we do, and whether or not that is stemming from the pain and trauma ego programming or the higher self soul programming. And again, we have like detective hats on, we have um, this lens of being able to kind of put the pieces together, if you will. And this is going to majorly reveal new insight. Because again, anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together in any kind of energy, any type of interaction, there's going to be an epiphany and aha moment of what it is that we need to do what we need to pursue what we want what we need what we desire. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy. So just when we are receiving this insight, and again, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you know, you would know that we get some progress, we get a couple of steps forward, and then that dark force energy comes in trying to pull us back. This is an example of that. We were feeling pretty good. We were having some epiphanies. We were having some insight. We gained a little bit of clarity. So it only makes sense that now we start questioning ourselves. We start questioning whether or not we have what it takes to actually make the changes, make the transformations needed. We have the ability to examine the old version of self versus the new version of self, understanding the distance, the gap between us and the commonalities that are continuously keeping attached to the old habits, the old perception, the old understanding. So it's at this particular juncture that we become aware of the problem. Again, moon and Virgo needs to identify the problem in order to fix it. We're identifying the problem in the way that we feel towards ourselves, where some wounds are still alive and well, where there is a negative narrative, where there is a heaviness and an emotional weight that again, doesn't even belong to us. But for some reason, we have chosen to carry this emotional baggage through our present moment through our journey. And so this is going to help us really identify said issue, tackle said issue and resolve said issue, especially if it comes down to the way that we think about ourselves, about our past, about our choices, our decisions here in the present moment, and what we actually think we're able to achieve, let alone deserve, in a futuristic vision, goal, and dream. So the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Virgo energy, making a beautiful interaction with Pluto, who of course is in Capricorn energy. And I'm also a fan of Pluto and Virgo energy working together because Pluto, again, does a deep dive deep in our psyche. The Virgo energy being ruled over by Mercury does a deep dive in our, let's call it egoic intellect. So there is this analyzation, if you will, because Pluto intensifies where it is that some seeds got planted probably early in our childhood that again, in our unconscious programming has continued to put us in particular situations and circumstances to make decisions to see things from a certain lens. Pluto is going to show us where it is that those seeds got planted and by who. 
and whether or not they're a problem or not. Because if they are a problem, we're able to shift them, we're able to adjust them, we're able to alter them in a way that works in our favor. Because again, Virgo works on the, you know, lower level of our intellect, um, our egoic intellect, if you will. But emotionally speaking, things are going to start bossing up, we're feeling pretty empowered. Um, we have the ability to yes, kind of focus on said issues, said problems, said, you know, blockages in our mental plane and our thoughts and our circumstances. But we're easily able to come up with a solution on how it is that we're going to shift it into our favor. And so emotionally speaking, then things can get super intense because we're essentially flipping tables, if you will, in order to clear our path in order for us to move on and move forward.